Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff, and in this video, we're going to be talking about the head thrust test, also called the head impulse test. This is a special test that's used during the oculomotor exam, and it is specific for a peripheral vestibular deficit, also known as a hypofunction. Now, this test is performed very similarly to the VOR test that we covered in the previous video, except we're going to be rotating the patient's head at a faster speed. Now, the requirement to be able to validly interpret this test is that the VOR has to be intact. So before you ever perform this test, you need to assess for an intact VOR. So if you need to know how to do that, go back and watch the previous video. But assuming you understand that and assuming the patient's VOR is intact, you can proceed with the head thrust test or head impulse test, and we're going to cover that right now. So, to perform the head thrust test, the patient will be positioned in sitting, and the patient is instructed to maintain gaze fixation on the PT's nose throughout the entire test. So, as we mentioned before, this is performed very similarly to the VOR test from the previous video. The difference being is that the VOR test is performed pretty slowly. All we're doing there is assessing for an intact VOR. Here, we take it a step further and we quickly rotate the patient's head in one direction. But again, they're trying to maintain that gaze fixation on one spot, like our nose or maybe even one eye or the space between our eyes, okay? So the PT is gonna quickly rotate the patient's head 30 degrees in one direction while monitoring the patient's eyes for being fixated on that spot. One thing I didn't write here that I always do is I always indicate which direction we're going to thrust first. So if I'm gonna rotate their head towards their right, I always indicate that so they're able to at least expect that, okay? And then we just alternate directions, okay? So let's take a look at that. So there's a head thrust to the right. You'll notice her eyes had to rotate left in order to maintain focus on my nose, okay? Then from here, the PT will slowly move their head back to neutral and then perform that quick rotation in the opposite direction. So we're gonna slowly move back to neutral and then thrust left. And we're just gonna repeat this as many times as we need to make sure that there's no corrective saccades. So that being said, what is a corrective saccade? Well, let's use an example here. Let's say that my mouse here, these are her eyes, and the play button here is my nose. So I rotate her head quickly, her eyes have to rotate in the opposite direction, and when they do, they land right on my nose. That's a negative test. That's a normal response. There were no corrective saccades needed to get her eyes onto my nose after the rotation, okay? But let's suppose that her eyes are not immediately able to go to my nose. Let's say maybe they overshoot it and then come back. Well, that was one corrective saccade. Right? The initial movement of the eyes overshot it, and then it required one corrective saccade to get back to my nose. Another example of one could be maybe it undershot it, and then required one corrective saccade to get back to my nose. One corrective saccade is still considered a negative test. It's when you have two or more that we have a positive test. So suppose maybe she overshot it, and then she went over it again, and then got back. That would be two corrective saccades, that would be a positive test. And any more than two is a positive test as well, okay? This presence of at least two corrective saccades, this is very specific for a hypofunction, okay? If you see at least two corrective saccades, it's very likely they have a hypofunction. But notice there's other criteria for a positive test. Reproduction of dizziness or any symptoms consistent with that, like nausea, headache, lightheadedness, etc. These are not super specific for a hypofunction, okay? Uh, if you see these, it's certainly abnormal. Again, if I'm doing this head thrust test, this should be asymptomatic. There shouldn't be any symptoms in somebody with a healthy, intact vestibular system. So maybe these things do point to a hypofunction. It's possible, but they are certainly not specific for that, and it definitely warrants further investigation. For example, if you have somebody with a central type impairment, and let's say one of their aggravating factors is rotation. Well, that could certainly aggravate their symptoms and they have a central deficit, right? If somebody has pretty severe BPPD, 
and maybe rotation is one of their aggravating factors, again, this could certainly do it. So to constitute a true positive test that is very specific for a hypofunction, it needs to be presence of at least two corrective saccades. So hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of the head thrust test. Make sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and hit that notification button for notifications for all videos in the future. Thank you so much for watching this video.